be diapers and a chimpanzee and say, get to work, kid. <laughs> and that's kind of been my career ever since. <laughs> um, just, yeah, I, I, it was great. It, it, we had a bunch of special effects and laser guns and, and my chimpanzee, uh, yeah. And so some of you had seen Star Wars at this point in your life. Just. What was it like, you know, to think about being on a big sci-fi production like that? Oh man, it was a lot of pressure for six years old. What are you talking about? Uh, you have to be a little adult, you know? Like, it, it, time is money and you can't sit around and mess up your lines. And so Lauren would, uh, Lauren Green would go over my dialogue every morning and and they called me the 40-year-old midget. <laughs> so, so after like I'd have to go back from school and I'd hit the set and they'd be like, all right, no cursing, 40-year-old midget on deck. So, but that's how you have to act when you know, you're any age and you're on set. I mean, at least you would hope that your actor could do that. Well, you know, so many of you started off as kids. Just, you know, what, weird. It, it was a, did you have similar experiences? He was green. He hunted purple buffalo. <laughs> he did hunt that purple buffalo. He Thank did. you, by the way, for ruining that trivia question, right? <laughs> um, yeah, very nice, very nice. Um, what do you guys want to know? Do you guys have questions for our actors? Yes, ma'am. Come on, stand on up. I don't want to stand up. I'm in a purple costume. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 what, is, what is your name and who are you asking a question of? My name is Grace. I'm asking Noah a never ending story question. All right, never ending story question. How did you survive the blowback of Moral of the Turtle Sneeze? Oh. <laughs> That's a good one. So, uh, who knows what they use <laughs> for monster snot in pretty much every horror movie? But they use KY jelly. So they had. So it, it, it literally, I got blown out of a compressed air canister, a, a wonderful mixture of KY jelly and water for about three months. <laughs> so, that's what happened. <laughs> Yeah. Do you, do you Thank you for your question. question. Is this every time. Uh, that turtle is right there. Therapy starts at four. Like table. There's a booth. There is. Yeah, you need to take a picture of this. I can't. Oh, I should be turned around. My name is Jacob, and I'm dedicating it to the Munch and Boo and Jacob and Boo voice actor. Is Jungle hungry? Always. Always hungry. Thank you for your question, my man. Take a Americana shirt. Anybody else? Who else has got a question? Oh, we got all kinds of questions. Man, start passing out free stuff and people want to know stuff. I'm in. Yeah. Okay, my name is Tom Clark from Drop the Spotlight. Um, I was wondering for the anime voice actors. Besides your Dragon Ball Z voices and DC voices you've done, who else is your favorite voice? Hmm. For me, it's probably true. I always usually say it's the one I'm doing at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> because they're paying me to do that. Good answer. Uh, but right now, I'd say it's probably from that show. I, at the time I got reincarnated as a slime, I played the door of the storm dragon. And I like his voice. It's kind of slightly majestic. See, he seems more of a person of royalty when he's not. So I like that voice. Tom McKee, how about you? For that question? Yeah. Uh, his answer, whatever they're gonna pay me with. Right. Um, Whores, all of you. I don't, I don't, I don't know, to be honest, the, I, the easiest lines I've ever had to do, just make zombie noises for four hours straight. That was amazing to just go, uh, mm, uh, and have a director going, no, we need more zombie-like. What does that mean? At least it's Friday at my house. So I, uh, I had fun reprising my role as Monichi's mother in Fruits Basket. It was a challenge because in the original Fruits Basket, I just did my normal English accent, but I had to do a German accent for her, and that was so challenging, which we like, you know, as actors, we like challenges. It was so hard to work on the German accent. And it was one time, normally in Korean anime, we don't get scripts ahead of time. It was one time they sent me the script ahead of time so I could phonetically write everything out. Uh, my husband speaks a little German, so he worked on it with me. I watched YouTube videos. I like I did all the things. And then Caitlin Glass is the director, and she has this fantastic German accent, and she's a great director. So she, her accent is so good that I actually thought she spoke German. Like, she was so good. So I, I really liked that just because of the actor challenge. And it's a great show. Josh, anything to add? 
Man, I, I'm right there on all comments. I guess, uh, man, I had I had a lot of fun with Android 16. Oh. I mean, 15. Oh my God. Uh, I, very very short, small little part, and he's only done one movie and maybe one video game. But he was he was fun. He's like the pimp Android. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for your question. Yeah, like you so, a question for everybody on the panel who wants to answer. What would your dream job be? What, what, would, what would be the project or the, the, the thing you would like to do next? What would, what would that be? Would you like to appear on a TV show, do an anime movie? What, what would I will take that one. All right. A lot of people don't like answers, but I love answers. There's a show mm, in the 80s, early 90s, called Samurai Pizza Cats. <laughs> I would kill for them to remake that show, and I will demand to be cast in that. Live action as Greedo Cervici. So, what, what, how would you deal with the blowback though? People being like, oh my god, Tom McKee ruined my childhood. <laughs> I don't care, I got to live mine. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. So, you know what? That's a great question. You know what? They, yes, they did remake, they did do a Bounce Star Black. Oh, they did. Did, did do that. Right. And, or, and there's never any story coming. Would you be interested in being in the project? Like Absolutely not. <laughs> no, I'm you don't that. No, why? Why mess with something that was awesome to begin with? You know totally. what I mean? Like, you know, sure. especially if Disney gets it, they're just going to F it up. Oh, and you just know they are. Like, they, they do everything they say. So. No when, desire to see boxes. When, 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 when Fincher and Leonardo DiCaprio owned it, I had some hope because at least they have some integrity in what they do movie wise. Uh, you know? In my defense, Samurai Pizza Cat sucked. Okay. So, <laughs> it was a horrible anime, but it was what fun to like watch. It? Uh, Walking Dead, something. What, what, what's the, what franchise would you love to be a part of? I'd rather really make some live action um, movie series on YouTube. It's called uh, Live Action Beauty Movie. <laughs> and, um, my mom has asked him to make me be a part of it. I'm an actor, he's like, no. <laughs> That's a good family right like, there. Just, just, just make it me. Just, 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 just wanted to be mad at me just for like that one reason. Cause it is weird. He makes really weird. Like, and he's like in high school too. He's just making like really weird stuff. I'm going to go to the channel right now. What would you guys like to be a part of? What would make bring you guys to Anime. Anime. You guys want to do it? Well, do anybody it. knows Chris Sabbath's number so we can get her an anime <laughs> job? I would like to do anime as well. Teasing part was this underlying I, tension between the two of them. That'd be crazy, but so that in some way she she always wanted to let Charlie know, hey, I kind of like you. Uh, honestly, I kind of lean towards covering like Patty and liking Charlie Brown. You know what's not? Oh my God, were you guys in the band with us? <laughs> I agree. I think that as a 
as they grew up, Charlie Brown would have been this big, lovable loser that nobody else would want. And so at some point, Peppermint Patty would have been like, come on, Chuck, let's get married. And they would have kids. And then when she got into like her 40s or 50s, she would figure out that Marcy was really more than a friend. <laughs> If you want, we can put this to the test. We can oh. put it to the test right now. Who's your question? Come in. So, Mr. Tor. Yes. What's your favorite weapon for Portland? Well, I don't know the name of it, but I like I like all the Tor pistols. Mm -hmm. I was a big pistol guy. I never liked the Tor shotguns because they they suck. Shoot. Um, yes. It was probably you had to get too close up. But I like the Tor. You know, I like anything that exploded. I like some of the rifles too, they were good, but you know, I did, well, my favorite weapon from Borderlands was the one uh, that screamed at you. Oh, yeah. You remember that name of that weapon? Shoot it, shoot it, shoot it. Oh, no. The Bane. It was a good weapon. The Bane, yeah, the Bane. The Bane. Yeah. The Bane. Yeah. My man, what's your question? Who's it for? Oh, it's for Noah. Yes, sir. Uh, so, that brand story, greatest movie of all time. No, no, no. You know, it got me to do some farming and stuff when I was a kid. You know, my parents were getting divorced when I was in fourth grade. So after that, which is how I watched it. Ooh! <laughs> oh, my question for you is, uh, you know, growing up, yes, sir. which is the best, best part of the movie, you know, obviously flying on top floor. Yeah. How cool is that? So. We had two. There was a 30-foot one that there was like maybe eight or nine people underneath, you know, pulling cables, and, and then they had the long neck and the head, and that was attached to a big old forklift motor that constantly overheated and would send me flying off. So they, they put an oh shit handle. <laughs> it's literally, they wrote oh shit on the handle. Because, yeah, yeah, it was a 30-foot drop into boxes, and it, it, you know, fun for one or two, three, maybe four times. But three weeks, not so much anymore. <laughs> so, uh, but you know, it was just foam, took some latex, and a little bit of fur. It wasn't the most comfortable, but yeah. thank God for the ocean handle. <laughs> All right, that, and that's a great question, and thank you for that. And, and it's always wonderful to hear how you guys are just curious. As fans, we all want to thank you for being here and being a part of that. What is your question, my man? All right, my question is also to uh, Atreyu himself. No, Hathaway, I'm sorry. Like, first of all, really loved the movie, never ended story. Like, one of my all-time favorite movies as a kid. Always loved it, was always captivated by it. I was one of those rare kids who never cried when uh, when the horse got sunk in the tar pit. I do a horror movie, we'll have to talk about, about that later. <laughs> I'm sorry. But like he pretty much already answered the one question that I was wondering about how Fal on how Valcor was uh, was filmed. But yeah. now I'm also wondering like how did you guys do the whole giant rock monster and the giant turtle and the and the panther? They did all of it. I mean, they were all animatronics. They just, you know, they used a blue screen and they shoot me from one angle and they have, it was all puppeteering. I mean, we didn't have some, C there was no CGI yet. So you had to literally, if you thought of it, you had to figure out a way how to do it, which uh, for me, that that's what movie making was, you know, that's amazing. I yeah. mean, a lot of people are like, like, but that's the mystique and that like, I mean, just how they did the nothing, like, or clouds, it was just, they just sprayed some ink in a, in a water tank. Mm -hmm. But the way they shot it was brilliant, and, and it looked so cool. Yeah. Now they got one dude sitting at a computer, and they make some clouds, and, you know, like, no big deal for me. But if you had to go work your ass off to go make that happen, that's really super cool. Yeah, so it's, like, and yeah. it still looks good, even, even in today's standards, you know? Yeah, yeah I agree. It still really good. I agree, thank you. And make sure you stop by the library table, we'll give you a t-shirt for your question. Go ahead. Was Mr. Oppenheimer on set doing voice notes? No, uh, they, they just had some cat that, I mean, it was pretty much anybody who had some free time would <laughs> grab some pages sometimes and read lines. Like it, Sometimes they had it recorded, but we didn't have playback. You had to, like, there was no instant, you know, record. You, you had to, it, it was a whole crazy mess. Um, yeah, it was like maybe five to ten people underneath the set, and they would have to have a camera shoot the, what they were seeing and then replay it for them. Like it was, I mean, it was challenging. 
you know, uh, man, like I tell people, the, the swamp just the swamps of sadness set was mind boggling. Like it was the biggest soundstage uh, in in Europe, second in the world. Mm -hmm. One end to the other, six foot mud. I mean, it, it was easily four times the size of this place. Yeah. Wow. Uh, and and we were there almost four months. But when you walk into a set like that and they got the smoke going and you're like, what the? F <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't take much acting, you know, when, 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 when you know, if you're present and doing your job and that horse is, is sinking and you're in that, you know, it, it, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty real. And right there. Not to mention very famously breaking an ankle, I believe. Oh yeah, I, yeah a couple, I broke a couple things on that movie. <laughs> they beat the hell out of me. Uh, the, the warp knocked me out like I was snoring for 20 minutes, like Frankenstein. And uh, but yeah, oh, that was oh, so he survived 80s acting for children. If you want to be successful in anything, you're either all in or you're all out. In my opinion. So don't do it unless you're gonna grind and don't do it if, unless you wanna go homework, auditions, blah, 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 and, and have zero uh, childhood. <laughs> if you wanna enjoy playing with friends and doing all that, go be a kid, absolutely. And when you're 18, you can kinda have a little, you can live a day or two, you can kinda decide on, on a course of action. I just, that's just for me. But you know, I don't know much about that. What's your thought about for you? He's cynical too, so I gotta I, I, think, I think the advice that I would give is to not take any of it too seriously. <laughs>